Welcome back to Computex 2023, and I am at the NVIDIA headquarters here with a 1000 FPS camera because I wanted to check out their new technology going into the higher end monitors, and that is Ultra Low Motion Blur 2, which I'm told is a big improvement over the original Ultra Low Motion Blur, ULMB, in that NVIDIA is working now with the panel manufacturers directly to optimize the transition of the frames to as near perfect as possible. So in this case, we've got an ASUS monitor behind us, the PG27AQN, which is a 360 Hertz 1440p IPS display. And essentially it has its overdrive and it's got its G-Sync, but now with a firmware update, it has this ULMB2 feature enabled. And what we've got here is a demo with the same monitor side by side where it's got this technology on versus off. And what I'm seeing here is it's also got a setting in the menu where you can change the pulse width of the brightness that's being flashed out on the screen. In this case, I found that having this at the max setting made it so there was about 25% of the monitor's max brightness to be displayed with the ULMB2 feature on at this max 100 setting. Dropping it down to 10 really dropped that pulse down or the brightness flash, and that was too weak to play games in my opinion. You will get sore eyes when this is happening. However, at 100, it is very playable, and what it does is it increases the motion clarity, and Nvidia claims it's a roughly around 1000 hertz, but at least with my eyes, it did look a lot better on the right-hand side with this technology on versus off on the left-hand side. So we'll take you guys through a bit more of a tour here with this technology right after today's video sponsor. This year's Computex was brought to you by ASRock and SCD Keys, bringing you a Windows 10 and 11 license for as little as $15 using that coupon code BFTYC. Links in description below. So with these monitors, currently there are two monitors which this firmware update supports, and they're both by AU Optronics. One is in this ASUS model, another is in the Acer 27 inch 1440p 360Hz IPS2. There is another two models that are planned. One is a 24 inch from ASUS, which I believe is going to have over 500 Hz refresh rate. And then another is from AOC, their Aegon model with 360 Hz. But like we said before with ULMB2, essentially you're dropping down the max brightness of your monitor to even at the max setting when this technology is on to 25%. So essentially what you're getting and what you're looking at with this monitor most of the time is a black screen. You're only getting 25% of this brightness being pulsed out at one fourth of the interval, if that makes any sense. And it's being pulsed out at the exact time the frame has transitioned one set of pixels to the next set of pixels. And that is going to trick your eyes into seeing crisp detail on the screen. And so I'm told NVIDIA is working closely with AU Optronics in this case to make sure that transition time is as best as it can be. Though unfortunately, when you do turn this setting on, you do lose that G-Sync ability since it is programmed strictly for 360 Hertz. And also you lose the access to change the overdrive setting since there's now only one pre-programmed overdrive setting that's being used in conjunction with the 360 Hertz and the brightness setting. So in terms of new things from the big three at Computex 2023, this is really the only thing that's hit the market, as well as I think there was AI generation for NPC characters, NVIDIA's cloud server ACE, which we'll get onto at the end of the video. Though this technology here is out already for the select monitors, you just have to update the firmware and then you'll be ready to roll. So if you guys saw NVIDIA's keynote, you would have seen that Jensen had a massive focus on AI data center and server. And it looks like a big focus of NVIDIA going forward is for the business to business world. But in this case, they're using the DLSS3 technology and they're pushing that down to what this program is here, D5 Render. And they're enabling that to work. And this is with an RTX 4090, by the way. They're enabling that to essentially be turned on in these programs. So when you shift between scenes, it makes things a lot smoother. And in this case, you can also turn on DLSS 2 and then say, for instance, boost this 15 FPS roughly all the way up to over 60 FPS. 
So it does make a difference when you're using professional applications and you want a smoother experience, whether it's for your own viewing pleasure or if you want to show someone something in a smoother motion. So continuing on that topic of low, something behind me here piqued my curiosity. And even though it's already been released, DLSS 3, they've got a demo set up here on the 3060 Ti versus the 4060 Ti. And what I wanted to see was the latency that the DLSS 3 was adding on top when you turn that on. So me being in my infinite wisdom, I decided to play around with a lot of different settings here. And I found out that when you turn on DLSS 3, at least in Cyberpunk, and you've got ray tracing on and all that stuff, it's adding about 10 milliseconds in total. And that's actually pretty good considering in a lot of cases, you can get a big FPS uptick in the games that you're playing with. So 10 milliseconds, especially if you're into competitive play, that can make or break and be the difference between getting the victory or not. But in this case, I guess for RPG players, it's good to know that it's not adding a huge amount of input latency on top. However, another thing with DLSS 3 is I've noticed that every game and every time I've tested it, you always have to have reflex enabled. And I was actually asking in video why this is, and that's because without it on, when you have a lot of the times ray tracing and all these other features turned on, it adds a significant amount of input latency. And it's actually to the tune of sometimes, I can see that counter testing it here, it's going over a hundred milliseconds. But when you turn reflex on, it can drop the latency significantly. And so they decided to basically make that a prerequisite when you turn on DLSS 3. And so in terms of gaming technology, we are pretty much wrapped up here for the NVIDIA booth, but there was really no juicy gaming GPU announcements. And that's what a lot of us were looking forward to, I'm sure. I was hoping that there would be some new secret GPU slipped in there, but we've got the RTX 4060 Ti that came out. There's the 4060 on the way. However, the ultra low motion blur 2 is pretty solid, seeing it in real time and taking some thousand FPS footage for you guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. But in terms of the ACE, the cloud server for game developers, that was something that I saw at the keynote and essentially it's been designed. So you give the backstory to the, well, the game developer makes the backstory and then the dialogue and all the animations and everything gets automatically generated by, by AI. And something that you may have seen was NVIDIA is focusing a lot on accelerated computing where they released their first or announced their first CPU at this keynote at Computex. And they also announced this huge like SLI server Grace Hopper uh, 200 DGX GPU, which was absolutely mammoth in not just the size, but it's computational power. So that's definitely a direction NVIDIA is taking. They're focusing on accelerated computing, AI, and I'm hoping as a gamer, a lot of that technology can trickle down into GPUs, and we also get some awesome upgrades in the future. But only time remains to tell what will be hitting the market for gamers. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And also, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you wanna see the videos as soon as they drop, stay subbed and ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.